Hey everybody, welcome to another MMO uh, development class. Yours truly, Mr. Derek T. Stevens. The T stands for too good to be true, and uh, my handler tonight is the always last week pink delicious Sydney Curtis. This time she legally changed your name to crap, what was it? I lost it, Sid. Uh, Raspberry Tart. She's now Raspberry Tart Curtis here, uh, coming to you live from the Buzz Cave. I'm deep in my bunker in North Carolina, and we got lots to go on. Uh, before we start everything and all the ins and outs, I do want to invite everyone here to get the word out. We're going to have a radio show Friday night, uh, and we have a great guest speaker. His name's David Miller from Imaginary Studios. Uh, he's going to talk to people from 3D Buzz on how to empower them to be able to make their own apps, how to market their, their own apps, what skill sets you need to make apps, uh, what's trending, huge stuff in transmedia. Uh, so it would very much behoove everyone to be able to come in and and listen to the show because we'll open up uh, the you know the callers they can call and ask questions. David's been around the block more than once. He's worked on major movies. Um, he's close to some big deals I can't talk to you about because I'm a part of them. And, Bad things would happen. Kittens would cry if I said something, and it did not come to fruition. So again, that will be Friday night. Sid, do you have a time frame for that? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Wow, wow, thank you, uh, Raspberry Tartness. Uh, I believe it's going to be six Eastern time. I believe that, but we will double check here on break. But anyway, with that said. Uh, We've been working a long time on the Elysians. I think we got a really good grasp. I said it before. Say it again. That uh, we kind of uh, get in tunnel vision on the Elysians. We've got a lot of great things developed, but I wanted to do something different, kind of jumpstart the creative juices, so to speak. And uh, so we start working on humans. We started working on what armor would look like. And the art team last week came up with some really brilliant ideas, kind of all over the board. The the one thing they've all agreed upon, and this was. I don't want to say happy an accident, but this is how in tune our art team is. Uh, we all start throwing cybernetics out there, cybernetic arms and legs and this and that. Uh, to kind of like have key components for slots for your character, maybe interchange them and stuff like that. But tonight's assignment, do you remember what it is, uh, Miss uh, Raspberry Tart? No, I don't. I was working on the comic page. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, the comic page is good. Um, tonight, everyone's assignment was to come up with two different classes of soldiers. Uh, I think it's very important. Actually, I, w I was kind of like driving in my Jeep today with the doors off, those who did not hear that, in the rain with a stocking cap and leather jacket on when it's 75 degrees out. Uh, but I was thinking how cool the world, and Steve Curtis has worked with his art team uh, for environments. They look beautiful. But what can we really do with the humans? I mean, they're going to be invading this planet, so to speak. And I know we need some holding bases and maybe a couple cities, but this, for the most part, we have the world established. We're not going to be world jumping and this and that that I know of. I mean, maybe, maybe we can in the future. But how are we going to make these humans unique? You know, they have two eyes, two ears, maybe an eye patch. I dig eye patches on hot chicks. Uh, but how are we going to make them unique? And this is what we're going to struggle with, or have been struggling with tonight. We're not going to do lots of environments because we have the world almost established, and we're working on it. I know uh, Steve Curtis is going to be drawing and has been drawing uh, some some like hangar bays and stuff. And speaking of uh, the man, the myth, the legend, is Steve available, Miss uh, Raspberry Tart? Already unmuted. Awesome. How you doing, Mr. Steve Curtis? I'm muted, dude. Hello. Uh, Sid, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, uh, three to the sharks near your home. That's my best Steve Curtis imitation that I can do. You don't ever get to speak for me ever again. <laughs> ever again? <laughs> Damn. Darn. Uh, by the way, that radio show will be 6 p.m. Central Time. Central. I'm Eastern. Okay, thank you very much. I was confused on that. Thank you for clarifying, sir. Absolutely. Can you, uh, real quick, kind of confirm what's going on with you and the whole situation here? I don't want to spill the beans, but I, I do want to say congratulations, if I can say congratulations at the moment. Uh, about? Uh, what you're doing with Buzz and, uh, and 3D Buzz. We already announced that. Did we? Yeah. I'm old. 
that I'm going to be instructing, that I've got an environment class coming up soon. Wow. And for those who are old like me, and forgot. I will also be doing a 3DS Max game asset class. Rock on, man. I'm going to have to take that. Yes, you are. I am. I'm going to be there because you're here for every class of mine, and it is just, I will be there for every class for you. Hey, uh, but I did want to kind of pick your brain real quick about environments. I, I know you've been busy doing tons of other stuff, ton of, tons of work for me, and tons and tons and tons of work for 3D Buzz. But what are your thoughts on that? I mean, can you kind of see where I'm coming from? We already have the world established. Um, you, you know what fun, feng shui is? How you say it? Feng shui? Yeah. I, I kind of see that where the human, maybe not because we're humans, but kind of like building bases and, and, and sides of mountains and stuff and using uh, fortified locations that are already natural. So, you know, they're here. It could be a hot spot. And they, they, they put down their LZ. That's cool. They, they fix their perimeter, and then they build their, basically, assets. Uh, can you give me your take on what you think would be awesome with some uh, environmental sure, ideas? Can you take my screen? Yeah, no, I can't, but uh, Raspberry Tart can. That's why I said, Sid, can you take my screen? Oh, I'm sorry. I got confused with <laughs> Sid and Raspberry Tart. Hold on. Here we go. All Look righty, at that. Can everybody see me? I can see you. All right. So I uh, started working today on some uh, hangar concepts. Um, mostly, uh, I tend to agree worldwide until we get to modeling and we have a design team kind of telling us what they're looking for in terms of gameplay design. There's not a lot we can do with the rocks and trees and stone and blah, blah, blah. But we can start designing uh, uh, the human buildings, so to speak. So I did a uh, quick uh, concept piece for a hangar deck, and then plugging said upcom uh, upcoming uh, 3ds Max class, I started doing some high and low poly modeling on walls. Nice. And then crickets. I'm sorry. I, I really, I really seen a bird. Out. I'm not lying. There was something outside my window here, and I, I was like, "Huh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. ADHD." I mean, I was really staring. And I'm like, what the crap was that? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I need to take my Ritalin. So these are the kind of things that we will, uh, I will be teaching how to do in class, building modular assets. Well, how so, many polys is that? Uh, the high poly one's 1,200, the low poly is about 700, and we'll bake the normal map from the high poly to the low. That is nice. Really well done. What did you use for reference? M my head. Oh, well, that's all you had to say, smarty pants. I <laughs> my head. I didn't know if you like, because, you know, I, I use everything on the Internet. Hot chicks, you don't even want to know why I look for reference for that, and it's, it's totally okay, <laughs> because I'm drawing hot chicks. My wife comes in. What am I? Gosh, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm using reference material. So it's that, okay. That, that works good. Mm -hmm. Thank you just, very much. Uh, just from various things I've learned over the years and uh, doing walls, floors, things like that. I like this. All right, so uh, let me play Captain Silly and Stupid here. That's it's not a far stretch by any means. Um, so you would use those walls to to make our levels. You would model them first, and you import them to. Would it be Unity or? Um, we will be doing it on the Unity platform. So yeah, you would model, texture it, and then uh, pull it into Unity. And then uh, all of these, uh, if you see like this one here is the same size. So you would have modular assets that would ultimately snap together. snap together. And you can build your walls, ceilings, floors from it, build basically anything you want. That rocks. The only one question I have is, why not Maya? Now, tease. I'm, I'm a Maya guy, and you're a Max guy. That's okay. We can agree to disagree, and we both understand Maya is more superior. But that's okay. I actually have an answer for that, if you'd like it. Sure. I'm a, I'm a look really stupid, aren't I? For that's any okay. of our for any of our students out there who want to take this course and who ultimately may not want to be indie developers, but actually want to work in a studio when it comes to game assets. Max is much heavily more used than Maya is. It is, and I hate to say that, but you're absolutely positively right. 
So uh, with that said, um, and kind of piggybacking on what we're going to be talking about during the radio show, uh, David Miller is going to give us some really great hints on what is coming up with transmedia, uh, I guess that industry, and most important, how to market and develop your own indie games. And as part of 3D Buzz, we're really wanting to help, I guess, empower our people. Correct, Steve? And what sorry, we... I was I was staring at a bird. What? <laughs> that doesn't work twice, man. <laughs> I swear I seen a bird or something outside my window. Okay, it could have been a Bigfoot. I'm not for sure. I live. Yeah, in David Miller will be in. He'll be talking about uh, transmedia, which is basically uh, using medias that already exist that we haven't thought of in the past as coexisting to create a product and bringing those things together to create a product. It, exactly, thinking outside the box. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> With that said, uh, Miss uh, Raspberry um, Tart. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Since we're on me, do you want Sid's uh, coloring or comic book pages? Because I have those. Yeah, that'd be great. Sid, you hate comic book pages? I you do. do These aren't job. done yet. I've only like inked the first three panels, and I've still got the rest to go because they're all sketchy and rough. Well, let me tell you what, later on I'm going to show you what I've been using Manga Pro 5 and the power of inking and I love Photoshop, don't get me wrong, I love Photoshop, but if you want to do comic books, this, this Manga Pro 5 is all about comic books. You have templates for pages, you can tone stuff, it's just, it's built strictly for comic books and I hope to show that power, and, but you did a really good job. Thank you. Hold on one second, please. Hey, can you pause it real quick? That thing I heard outside, there was just a big bang, so I really need to check that out. And if you hear a gunshot, call 911. But I really... <clears throat> hey, welcome back. <laughs> that slight pause of the cause was brought to you by Mother Nature. Huge tree branch fell on my roof. It startled me a bit. But going back to what's going on, most important, Miss... Uh... Pinkalicious slash Raspberry Tart Sydney Curtis and her comic book pages. Uh, tell me how you went about this, Miss Sid. Um, can we go back to the first page? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I was Ray sent me the script and I really just did my best to make it as few panels as possible while still kind of getting what was happening across. I I don't know. Well, no, that's good. I mean, you got to follow the script. They're playing with fire right now. I'm hoping Mr. Wolf can uh, make that look all right. I didn't want to draw it and make it look bad. No, no, it's it's a total, totally understandable and fine. Whenever I I sent my stuff to to Wolf, I made little art notes like this needs to be a fire sphere like this. Because you're right. I mean, we could draw straight lines or solid lines in there, and it would be okay, but. That's the colorist work, and Wolf does a brilliant job of that, so totally understand. And you did a good job, Sid. Proud of you. Thank you. And you're right, comic book, man, we were talking about this before uh, the broadcast. I much rather do concept work. Uh, I did work for Sega, and they paid insane amounts of money for like seven drawings. And with a comic book, with this is page here, the first panel you have, one, two, three, four, five, six, at least ten different characters going on. Then you have to worry about angles because you don't want to keep repeating the same angle. And a lot of times the writers have something very specific in mind. Like, I need uh, this over the point of view shot of this guy shoulder throwing this other guy over here and he's the X, Y, and Z happen. And you have to dissect that. And comic books take a lot of time. And then I really, really hate inking my own work. After I draw it, I want to send it off like, fine, it's done. Let someone else ink it. Or in Steve's case, just let him color it. He's going to make it look even better. I know he can. Sort of thing. And it's true. He makes all my artwork look so much better. But really well done, Sid. Uh, throw in Mr. Ray really quick, and then we'll start talking about our uh, our human stuff. All right. I like how you made some of the girls pudgy. You got a little muffin top looking thing going on there. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a nice touch. You want the kids to be definitely identifiable. Exactly. Really well done, Sid. Thank you. I tried. So, it took forever. <clears throat> How many pages does that make it? Uh, is it page 
six that we're on now after this is complete? I'm not totally sure. I just made it two separate pages because the second page, she's a little bit older, and I just wanted the separation so that would click more. No, it's, it's a great idea. And there very, are already enough panels idea. on first page anyway. Okay, good call. And these are listed as page four A and B, so I don't know if that's a total of five or if we have a sixth one floating out there or what. Okay. Well, i got to get busy on uh, the next page here after this. We get all this color and more balloons and stuff. But you know what? Hey, we're making a product. And that kind of, like, again, ties in with what uh, David Miller was talking about, about transmedia. We are going to tie in uh, our MMO class here and our actual video game that we'll be working on uh, with a comic book to, I guess, relay what's going on in backstory. And we're already starting to build lore within the story itself. And hopefully it will take people's attention. And uh, in the beginning, Steve and I were talking, well, what's going to happen? Because you know, we have several different artists on this, and the styles are close, but they're not the same. And that's cool, because I want people to understand this is, it's not a Derek Stevens thing. Oh, heck no. It is a 3D buzz thing, and we got some great artists on this. Uh, it's almost a Curtis thing, because you guys are freaks and everyone can draw. So, uh, and, and you guys are doing a, a lot of the artwork. So really well done, Sid. Proud of you. I, and I know I've asked you to go outside your comfort zone to do this. Yeah, I like concept work more. It is, because you can, if you're a concept artist, you have like, I have like four different poses. I can go, bam, bam, draw real quick. And then you know you want different armor on it. Just tell me what you want on it. And I got a really cool action pose. And it's easy. It's a lot easier. Uh, like I said, comic books are work. You did a good job. Bitta, baby, bitta. Any last thoughts on this, Mr. Uh, Ray or Mr. Steve? I think she did a great job. I can't wait to see Wolf color. Do we want I know, to right? uh, unmute our colorist? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, let me find his name. There we go. Can't wait to see me color it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. In the dark with you guys. Uh, I will send uh, some notes awesome. when it's finished, too, to kind of get an idea of what's going on. It will be great. And here's the deal. Once these two pages are colored, and I know Mr. Ray's got another story, and there's just a lot of personal junk I'm going through at the moment. I won't even go with all the ins and outs like that. I will adapt and overcome. Hoorah, because it cannot rain all the time. But once we get all these pages done, colored and stuff, what I'll have Mr. Ray do is, again, look at all the pages, and then what I'm requesting him to do is page one, pen one, this is what he wants the word balloons to say. I want, you know, one last revision. He'll hand it to me with Manga Pro, which I'll show you very soon. Uh, it's great with, uh, with the balloons, thought balloons and, and thought bubbles. And it's just easy. And then you make your tails do X, Y, and Z. It's an easy fix, easy program to, to work on. And you can change the fonts, font size, and the colors. It's this is intuitive as Photoshop, if not more, because you can do anything, and you can make your own word balloons as well. So once all these are colored and done, I want Mr. Ray to, to look at them, and I understand a lot of things have been changed uh, because artists interpret different things, and it'd be great if we were all in the same studio going, okay, this is what I want you to do, and this is what I want you to do. As a matter of fact, this book I'm doing that's a, like a 110-page graphic novel, the dude and I uh, from Alaska, he's a good guy, but he's very specific in these, in these first 12 pages. And because he's in Alaska, I can't just like jaunt over there nonchalantly and go, oh, hey, what do you think of this? So, you know, I'd scan my stuff and send it to him, and he'd try to make art notes. And then I'd have to try to interpret it. So what he did, which I, I thought was really cool thinking outside the box, he got his phone out. And he did a video recording, okay, this page is, this is good, I want this change like this, and he'd point to it. And I, as he was talking about it, I'd take all my art notes down. It was, it was a much better way of communicating. And then he put it on a YouTube channel, his own private, whatever it is, so I can just go back and refer to it. And that may be what we need to do in the future. If Mr. Ray's cool if it's say, okay, we got this, and here's what I want you to do. And the only difference between what I'm doing and what we're doing here is I'm getting paid uh, – to do this novel, this graphic novel. So I've got to make sure everything is done right. With uh, what we're doing here at 3D Buzz, I want to make sure we get it as close as possible. But I also understand we're not making money off of it. 
we're doing it out of labor of love and the hopes that you know we'll catch people's attention. I want to be as professional as possible, but I understand you know we can only have X amount of revisions, uh, so we will find a better way to do our workflow. But with that said, Mr. Wolf, you already uh, formulating and cooking up some ideas. I I was just thinking about like uh, how it's cool. Uh, how everybody, the expression she's put on everybody, it's uh, that's an important part. It's easy. I mean, a lot of people uh, will draw some uh, good-looking characters, but they uh, won't necessarily uh, be communicating a lot of expression. So I, I appreciate that there's a lot of expression and different expressions. And that is not an easy task to do. I mean, you're totally right. Uh, a lot of people can draw like, I'm a superhero in a superhero pose, but I have a mask on. And you, you're right, you can't really convey that emotion. Uh, but every figure in here, the little kid, the, the arms raise, Arr. Yeah, that's great, too. And then the two panels in the middle where she kind of has that sly look on her face, like, yeah, look at oh, wait a minute. Then she's like, there's regret right there. And it's the subtleties with the shapes of the eyes and the eyebrow positions. Uh, you captured that really well, Sid. Thank you. She's trying to make fire and it's not working. Well, well then that'll be easy. Easy. it'll be easy for me to color. <laughs> <laughs> I like fire that's not working. He's yeah, such a uh, smart aleck. Also, uh, also <laughs> Sid, for somebody with really no inking experience, the inking you have done so far looks very good. Thank it does. You. I think you've pointed out, Steve, you're, you're totally right. Totally right. You, you know what I say, uh, show a man how to sort of fire once, great, he can cook something, but set a man on fire and he's warm for life. Yeah. Or dead. And on that note. <laughs> and I love the clothing choices that you, you've given him. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing there. <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, we, Eve has done such a great job with a lot of the, the clothing designs that she's done and uh, I'm hoping that NATO, I don't know if, I'm not sure if he's here tonight, but I'm hoping that he's done his homework and research so we have a place as artists and other people can look as we can go back for reference and think, oh, okay yeah this is great because I'm just as guilty my first the first page I did, actually hold on, I have it right here at the, the pencil version I have I guess coral on boobies rock in front of boobies, more coral on boobies, and a tape booby brawl thing. Uh, nothing wrong with that, because I'm a dude, but Eve done some great work. I didn't have time to look for reference material and dig through everything. And once NATO has that all sorted out, we will uh, we will, <laughs> make sure my screen's all up. Uh, we'll be able to uh, you know, pull that reference really quick. So I'm, I'm excited, Sid. Well done. Sid, I liked how you uh, gave the boy that that main thing, <laughs> that, that hair thing. Yeah, I didn't either, so I just went with what I'm really glad I thought of that hair stuff. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, I'm not. It's you're, all you're wolf. Glad what? I thought of that hair. On. Oh. And that's all wolf. I got to give credit where credit's due. I didn't think of that. That's all you. It, is that the same kid from from earlier? Or is this another one? Yeah, I tried to keep the looks uh, close to the younger versions of them, try to make it look like they were the same people. Yeah, that come in handy when I, col so I don't color them, you know, purple or something. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I will, I'll send you notes and try to make sure everything's clear. Yeah, cool. Alright, communication is key. Uh, what I want to do, you guys have my screen now, you say, oh, close, hmm. or close, okay. Uh, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about Manga Pro. And no, we're not being sponsored by them. It'd be cool if we were, uh, and they're not paying me money for it. I'm just really telling you my workflow now, uh, and I really want to say thank you to Mr. Ray. He's uh, the gentleman who opened my eyes up to Manga Pro 5. And I'm like, man, I don't want to learn anything else. I got to learn more of Maya. I've got to do X, Y, and Z. And I got the program, and I'm very grateful and blessed for it. And so I started looking at tutorials. I'm like, it's a Sunday. I love my babies and my wife. I'm like, I've got... I got to take a day to just learn some of this stuff, and I'm glad I did. So uh, indulge me for a little bit. This is not really an art class, but I kind of want to show you guys the power of, uh, of Mango Shop 
Omega Pro 5. So uh, real quick, these are my two characters. This guy right here, little error going on. I'm thinking more of uh, a demolitions type sort of expert for my class, a demo guy, where he has got lots of ordnance in through here and his backpack through here. And he's lightweight, he's fast. I'm not saying it's a suicide bomber like you you get in playing some of their games. I think it was that World of Warcraft. You had those dwarves, and they'd run and blow themselves up. This guy's smart. He doesn't want to do that. And then going for more of the, the retro scene with this and what with Mr. Clinton, his, his nice, sleek, smooth armor, uh, I, I try to capture some of this, some of the lighter plating in through here because, you know, it could be a spider silk combination, which we have that nowadays. I wanted to make them light. I gave them those little kind of funky looking things for knee pads that are very flexible. The whole gun looking thing right here is very, in my opinion, retro. And I wanted to have the special ability with this trooper here to be able to uh, jump short, I can't, uh, blah, 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 jump short distances using a rocket pack. I think that might be kind of cool to see, you know, land. Let's uh, show you the power of Manga Shop Pro. Uh, very much, it's like it's like Photoshop. When I've already come down through here, they call it rastering, and, and maybe Photoshop does it too. I'm just not that that great with it. I come in through here and make another layer on top. And, you know, if I switch this off, it's gone. I have the blue area right through here. I know that uh, I'm on that layer. Again, you have your color wheel. It's really, really nice and cool. I have it picked here black. I'm going to hit my pen. That's my pencil. Pen. I like the G pen. It's a nice, smooth stroke right through here like this. It's just very nice and crisp. So with this layer on top, I can literally come in through here. Let me actually take this layer down a little bit in opacity and come back to this layer. And I can start really finite and some nice detail in through here like this. And again, this is not really an art class, so to speak. But I really wanted to show the power of Manga Shop Pro. And then I'll finish it up through here. This is where I'm seeing like uh, his insignia, what rank he is. And I'm almost done. This would be good enough for purposes. Well, I've always struggled with this. And I'm sure you can appreciate this, Sid. Because if you're just using the Wacom tablet, you know, I, I draw, I'm actually going to shock you, Steve, but I'll probably even start drawing comic books, all digital now, so you're getting the paper and stuff. And it's for this reason here. I can spin my canvas around. Do you promise, Eric? Do you promise? I'm promise I'm working on it, but you know sometimes well, on the Wacom tablet it's hard to get those the lines you want because of the way the paper's positioned and it's not like you can move your screen around. But I just did. I can come in here. I have nice. You can lines. do that in Photoshop. I didn't say you couldn't. I'm just saying I found oh. out how you do it here. <laughs> okay. In Photoshop, you can't do it quite so much. Yeah, I didn't know you did Photoshop. Actually, on my uh, tablet, uh, I have the ability to to set that to a hotkey spinner thing where I can just spin it around. All right, so this is cool. It's nice. It's pretty. Let's say we're, we're finished. We have the materials palette over here. And the materials palette, I'll show you some more things after I show you some tones. Uh, materials. Let's see, color pattern, monochrome, there we go. I'll go to my basic. And I'll come and get my magic wand tool. What's that? Right here. And say so this is the area that I want to, to affect. And I'm going to take this 60% over here like this. And boom, I have my little color area. And you can see the more I get in and more pixelated it is. And there's a couple different ways you can 
get rid of all this stuff. You can use your magic wand tool. You come in here and it cuts. And it cuts. <coughs> Deselect my eraser tool, E for the hotkey. And what I'm doing is racing the overspray right through here. What's really cool is if, since I'm on this and I hit my P, my pen button, it starts drawing that pattern in again, which is cool. So if I mess up, I don't have to go back and try to reselect and all that other silly stuff. So let me come in here real quick. And I appreciate you guys to indulge me in this. And then I'll come in through here. Make a little bit of highlights coming in through here like this. So already my come back to 100% here, pretty darn cool. So then I can select my little magic wand tool again and say I want this area through here. And I'll take a line pattern and throw it here on top of it. Hit my eraser tool again, the overspray that I don't want. When I come back to here and turn this layer off, I mean, already less than two minutes, you've got something kind of cool that's going on. I mean, it, it's really powerful. And you know, you can come in here, use negative space for your eraser tool, and make more highlights as long as I'm on the right layer. Are you creating the superhero Plaid Man? I am Plaid Man. <laughs> but like again, already you can see how what a powerful tool this is because before in Photoshop, and I'm not a Photoshop guru, and Mr. Steve will definitely tell you that, I'd have to select stuff, try to make masks on stuff, and it's just it was a lot harder. And I won't go into the word balloons, but I will show you this. This is also really cool. Uh, Come up here to File, New, I'll hit OK, and then let's see, come to 3D, I'm going to hit Body Type, we'll make it Chick, that's cool, I hit Pose, and then I bring this right here, and it's like Poser. Well, that's pretty sweet. You can shift everything around, and you hit the joints. Can you bring your own stuff into there? You know, I, honestly, I, I don't know yeah. yet. Okay. I'm really, really new to it. But if you don't like this particular pose, hold on. I don't know about your own stuff, but I believe you can bring in uh, Poser and Daz characters. Which you can create, so, yeah. yeah. You can I do think your there own. is a way to do that. There's got to be. Yeah. Focus editing, hold on. <laughs> This is a way to change the geometry around as well, like, like in Poser. Reverse model, blah, blah, blah. blah. Anyway, so, so you're not happy with that pose. You can just drag another one in here. And then what's really cool is you can... Oops. As my fingers go stupid here. And just reposition everything you want. And you can also muck around the camera angles. So if you needed a backward shot of someone sitting down or a side view, it's great. You can throw this down, then you can create your own roster layer on top of it. And as I made many, oops, come and get my okay. pen again. Okay, but you're not actually drawing it on it in, in three dimensions. You're drawing on two dimensions on the three-dimensional object, right? Correct. Correct. So, you can just use it for poses. Because I think there's a thing in like a Photoshop Extended or something where you can actually draw on the characters. Is that so? Ah, uh, yeah. Like in three dimensions. Stuff. I'm not very familiar with it, but yeah, you yeah. can actually paint on 3D right. models. Well, let's Buzz and I were just talking about this the other day. He's like, yeah, you kind of got to get away from drawing your wife all the time. Is that your portfolio 
has this short haired blonde girl on it all the time. <clears throat> like, I'm sorry. And boom. You know, it's just it's to me it's really powerful. And I know there's poser out there and there's lots of other different things, but it, it, it kinda like throws everything right here for you. You have different characters here that you can Ah, okay, my computer's thinking. Bring them in her dress, and you can do the same thing, move it around. You also have an image material palette. You can bring different, like, roses, soft colors, and stuff like this. Through the small objects, you have chairs you can mess around with and position um, backgrounds that are already created for you. Different textual backgrounds. I have a tree in the background. Uh, it's just, it has cut my workflow down by so much. and It allows me to actually do more work and make more money and get paid. Uh, because when you're a freelance artist, it's all about money and time. Time is actually money. So that is a really, really, really quick overview on, on MegaShop Pro 5. Uh, relatively cheap. I think it's like $79 and you know plus tax. Uh, but if this is something you want to do, I definitely recommend, hey, go for it. Uh, because some of the poses, and we were talking about different camera angles, if I couldn't get something correct, they even have different hands in here that you can select, uh, different shapes of hands and positions of hands. And that comes, in, instead of taking a photo with my, my camera phone and then you know looking at it, boom, I got a hand right there. It just makes things so much easier and faster. But those are my two uh, classes. I want to do a demolition guy and then a standard foot, sh foot soldier uh, that's more retro. That's what I came up with. Any thoughts on my, my creations? Chirp, 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 chirp. Uh, on, on your creations, not the product. Well, actually, either or. Anything, any questions on the, the product or any uh, questions or comments on uh, my two soldier creations? Uh, the Second, the one on the right, anyway. Uh, I think it makes me think Scuba Steve. <laughs> I'm Scuba Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I think it's. I think it's because of the the head thing, though. The I guess, guess. I guess the back kind of it, it could be a Scuba thing. It, it does, does look, look like better. Scuba Steve. <laughs> Shampoo <laughs> is better. No. Shampoo made your hair clean. Conditioner is where it's at. It leaves it silky and smooth. Wolf, I hate you. I'm going to throw that out you because, but I love you at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. It's not very helpful, but... Uh. No, I'm just going to say scuba. We have uh, second infantry scuba Steve unit coming into uh, the LZ. There are five angels right now. EAT is less than two minutes. Uh, what, is, what is this helmet supposed to be about? It's just uh, a regular helmet. The way I pictured it, I didn't really want a helmet on him, but almost like a cloth that folds over his head. I wanted it really super lightweight. Then you have the goggles because, okay, it looks like a scuba diver. Sorry about that, but you know we talk about the infrared and the point of view right. for, from more. You know, if you, he has a handler that can monitor his life signs, vital signs. I, I wanted something instead of like, well, he has a contact lens. I mean, you know. Theory do that, but it's not visually very stimulating. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. In the future, they're they're probably going to have. I mean, things are just getting smaller and smaller. But uh, it, so yeah, flat uh, makes sense. But I think still visually, it might be better if, like, on the side there was. Um, it like protruded, and I mean, like the side of his head, like it's it was attached. You know, think think of, uh, you know, to, to back to his ear and stuff. You know, like if there was, you know, something uh, there or something. Is that a maybe, chat that I hear? Maybe look more like, I mean, less like a like scuba gear yeah. or scuba mask. Whatever. Oh, wrong layer. What, I just what drew would, up layer. Crap. What would be neat, I, I think, uh, 
on the visor if there is uh, like almost like uh, I don't know some green lines or something like kind of neon lines. I mean that's not really for the inking part. So you know it's more of a coloring thing. But uh, as it like it maybe they're looking at things. It could <laughs> I mean it could even be like like in the matrix ones and zeros or something. But I I think that's a little much. But you know that kind of uh yeah okay that sucks but I understand what you yeah. mean yeah yeah you know just so, you know like something going on there I don't know no that that'd be really cool especially for like a cut scene you you come up and you see all the really that'd be that's a very good idea actually right but that's the two I came up with so uh, does anybody have any questions in, in their comment uh, in, the, in the audience Miss uh, Pinkalicious. Anybody got anything? So far, if you were gonna put, if you were gonna put uh, spider legs on mechanical spider legs on one of these guys, which one would it be? <laughs> well, here's what I would do. I would take this right like this. I hit edit, copy, file, new, hit OK, and then I hit edit paste, then I throw this bad boy down here like this, and get a nice blue color like this, and hit my pen, and then I start to build rimbles or whatever Steve calls it. Greeble. Greeble. What was that, gremlins? Put some gremlins on them? Gremlin, yeah, of course. Uh, I I did I wasn't really following uh, what you were doing with the textures on that other guy. The other guy, what I did was I selected uh, some of the materials palette. And I go to basic right here, and I have all sorts of presets, and you can like rotate and do all sorts of cool stuff from them. Different patterns from like a noise pattern. So if I wanted this here. Right. And then I can actually literally just come with my eraser tool. Now, is that, is that like to add texture, or would you do that? Are you talking about doing that actually instead of color? Well, it really depends on what uh, the client wants. Like, uh, uh, hold on, file. How how does that replace a, a mask? You were saying. Instead well, of a mask, works, it works like a mask. It, you can see this kind of thing, and then you can put color layers over the patterns. Oh, and they don't go anywhere else. Right. So I, I, this is one thing you got rejected. So it kind of has like, like a built-in mask or something. Yeah, a lot of this is sort of built-in masking. Right. So okay, so I have this one layer, all this tones and stuff are on it. Uh, this was rejected, and that's fine. So I, I picked my red, I made another layer through here, and sort of my brushes. And what's really cool about the brushes, when I come through here like this, and say he's gonna have a red face, I have a paint here, but I can also paint on top of it. And uh, this is also not what I'm wanting to do right now. So what, let me do some more research. Okay. But what's r really cool about this, I've seen the tutorial and it may be coming down with uh, the different water oil paint. Let's do an oil paint here. So I have an oil paint through here, right? And you can tell how it looks. But now if I go on top of it, so much lighter this is right through here. It's like you're pushing and pulling. The more I go over an area, the darker it's going to get. Uh, uh, what's really cool about this whole program is it's like real-world applications. You're gonna, whenever you use oil paint digitally, it's going to be affected like oil paint or acrylics. Same thing with the airbrush. It's just much more intuitive than just here's a tone, and then you have to come back in with your burn tool to like lay shadows and stuff down like that. And I've, of course, there, there's a lot more I need to learn. I need to know where the multi-layer, multi, -layer, multi oh, let's see, multiply. There's a multiply layer. Again, just like Photoshop. So you would set this up like Photoshop and you start painting on top of it so your, your lines are able to be seen in the background. 
uh, it's just a powerful tool. There's a lot more I've got to learn, and uh, I will, darn it. So that is my two cents. And you can download a free version to try it out for a while, too. I don't necessarily, I, obviously the, the whatchamacallit, the, that th the 3D model things, they, that's uh, really cool. Uh, it, how how does it how's it made inking easier? Uh, with me, probably because I don't have my uh, Photoshop set up like this. Uh, but everything, and again, Steve and I talked about it. Uh, this, it comes this way. You don't have to go like push buttons in Photoshop. I can come. Oops, let me get a black color right here. If I press hard, it's thick, thick, and the less pressure I have, it gets thinner, 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 like this. And again, I know you can do that in Photoshop, but I didn't have it set up in Photoshop, and this comes default like that. Well, what would be cool is if you could, at some point, uh, set it up in Photoshop and uh, and then try it and see how it com the diff two things compare. Well, again, I can save this out as a JPEG, open up Photoshop, and there's some things I can still do faster than Photoshop, and it's there. You can save it as a Manga Pro 5 file or different file, save as a PNG, which I, I do a lot of work with for uh, phone app games. You can do a bitmap Manga Studio for itself, a TIFF. So you still have some good options and stuff that you can come down there and save. Uh, Wolf, one of the things it does that you would absolutely love, I put uh, a, a, a link in there for a tutorial on it. You want to do perspective. You just okay. set your horizon, you set your perspective points, and then you put a layer on top of that ruler. Anything you draw will be correct. It automatically sets up. Uh, all the angles for you, so you don't have to draw lines, you don't have to put rulers down, you don't have to do anything like that, just automatic. Yeah. And no more grids. I can't it's, even it's, imagine that, but that sounds cool. <laughs> it, it's probably, for my money, it's coolest feature. Yeah, uh, just look at that tutorial. It'll show you. Watch it all the way through. It's uh, It'll blow your mind. And, <laughs> Sweet. I, and I will learn this ins and outs, and uh, hopefully it will be another... Uh, class that Steve and I and Buzz and Angie are talking about and hopefully the very near future. Again, uh, being part of the staff of 3D Buzz is awesome because as much as I push you guys, they push us because I, I've got to learn and Steve and everybody else has to learn the latest cutting edge technologies so we can teach it. And in and, and my everyday aspect, this is what I do for a living. So any shortcuts that I can have, again, time is money. Um, so this is a very, very cursier sort of like baby steps of this program, but this is what I found, and I went through some tutorials, like I said, on a Sunday, and it's, it's really helped me out with one, maybe five hours of training on this. Uh, they have a book called Manga Shop Pro for Dummies. I have it ordered right now. Just the tutorials online, the guy is really good, but uh, it's just to get your feet wet. And this thing is very vast, and you can just do so much with it. So enough about that. We'll get back to the MMO class. Derek, is there, are you left-handed or right-handed? Uh, I draw right-handed. I okay. fight left-handed. <laughs> uh, so um, when you're flipping it around, you do that so you can draw to the right or, or down more than up and to the left? So it's like this, this angle right here, I, it's hard for me to come down and like this. Sometimes I'd have to come up like this to do it. Right. But if I flip it it's over hard here, to draw left, right? Correct. And I can just come down here and it's just so much better. Or if I have a bunch of straight lines I need to come through here. And I can literally just start, you know, flipping it around where I have all the the straight lines that I, I need to get sort of thing like that and just does the program have that that pen tool thing where you can manipulate the lines after you've drawn them you know what I'm talking about anybody
uh, if you use uh, the, it has both raster and um, a metal blocking on the name of it. Uh, the, uh, vector. Vector, yeah. The, you see those uh, at the lower left hand corner, you see those two little pages with the pages turned all the way down. The one on the left is raster. The one, the next one over to the right from that is vector. And if you draw it with vectors, yes, you can move the lines. You can make them thicker, thinner, uh, do all kinds of things. But. And the really cool aspect is, again, using that perspective tool, if I, I came in here and I wanted to, uh, hold on, file, and this is what I think would be great once I take Steve's class for, for background art. But if I wanted to have, like, a podium sort of place that has some, thickness to it and I'm drawing stairs that are coming through here like this and maybe you know some sort of turret looking things up through here like this they have the ability to to make this perfect a perfect circle or a perfect ellipse and you can adjust it by all the I call them vertices vertices points I've seen the tutorial I've not I've not mastered that tutorial yet but you can make perfect circles and ellipses with this all in perspective and there's there's no grids. It it just does it for you. So uh, once I take Steve's class and I get to learn everything he's taught me about perspective and more about concept for background arts, uh, I want to learn that then utilize the tools here. Just, you know, before I almost I had a pretty much a good job with Rob Liefeld because I did three point perspective and three point perspective is. You'd have your vanishing point here, here, and here. So if this is my building, these are my intersecting lines through here like this. And this comes down here like this for a bird's eye view. Then you, know, you have to come in here and you have to race all this stuff through here. Then, oops. But I had like Nightcrawler up through here jumping from building to building in a really cool three-point perspective where it was coming down. And it was a lot of work because it was all done by hand and lots of long rulers and erasing this and that. And you can do it in a quarter of the time with this program. I just, I have not mastered it yet, but you can do it. But again, I want to go away from this program for a moment. I'm mm -hmm. going to bore everybody. It's a good read. It's, it's a good cheap program, just as good as Photoshop in many aspects. Better in some, I think. But we'll get back to uh, the matter at hand and talking about what we've built today for our soldiers. Does anybody else, go ahead and bring the rest of the art team in if you can, this uh, raspberry, raspberry chart. chart. And let's see what they've got to, to show us tonight. Or actually, you know what, go ahead and bring them in and we'll take a five minute break, it's the top of the hour. And then we'll come back and we'll start going through all that we've done so far. Is that cool? That is cool. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I actually checked the perimeter around side of my house and found two raccoons uh, throwing eggs at me in my, my Jeep and made me cry. I'm not for sure what uh, Pink Delicious was doing during the break, but we are back. Uh, to do a quick recap, I did a very cursier sort of uh, talk about Manga Shop Pro 5. I, I love the program. We've talked about the comic book. Uh, showed a couple of the illustrations of what I've been working on as far as soldiers. I really like the idea of the jetpack, especially for, for rapid movement in a game. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, so that's what I came up with. And uh, Miss Sid Curtis has brought everybody in. And uh, what I want to do is kind of open it up and find out who wants to show their soldiers. And I want to talk about their ideas and what they're doing. So whose hand is raised first, Miss Sid? Anybody? We have Clinton. All right, I was going to say Clinton or Miguel is going to be here. So why don't you take uh, Mr. Clinton's screen? I'd love to see that. Hey, Mr. Clinton, how you doing, dude? I'm doing good. How about you? Fantastic. Any better? I'd grow hair. Well, this is one of the ideas I had. Um, I was thinking about the nanite sort of idea or nanobots, and I was thinking about maybe having one class of character that has a gun that can take energy away from uh, combatants 
I, I don't know if they'd ever be facing similar humans or people who had similar technology, but I, I was thinking you could use this to uh, uh, to de incapacitate any opposing units. Like maybe if you had a rogue, uh, a rogue human or some, or bandit or someone, you could use this to drain out all the power from whatever they're using. And then I, I was thinking that w with all of this energy that they're pulling in, that. Uh, they'd have a lot of surplus, and uh, and so I kind of took that same hexagonal idea, and uh, again it would be glowing, and I made that much more prevalent than the armor. But he still needs some protection, so I was thinking maybe a force field uh, would be uh, would be created using that extra energy. But force fields seem kind of boring, so I just had these uh, floating hexagons around here, and it. It's all open to whatever other people think of it, but that's what was, went through my head. I like the idea. I mean, I can, again, being visually stimulating, uh, not so much like my school, but Steve, thank you very much, Wolf, for that. I'll never forget that. Uh, but if you had some sort of dome shape and, you know, you, your opponent is shooting at you and then the dome in, in hexagon form starts to disappear, and when it's all gone, you don't have any more force field. I think that'd be a great visual cue. I also like the hexagonal pattern that you have on the individual here, because as it's sucking up energy, it could literally glow different patterns. And, you know, it starts out with a like a cool blue, and when it's full of energy, maybe it's a red, and then you can channel that into one huge shot of some sort. Again, I'm speculating and, and talking off the cuff, but I think you got some really cool ideas. Mm -hmm. My other idea of what he could do is he could, all, in addition, he could be sort of like a, a battery unit. So if, if there's other, if he's got other people with him, there would be some way where they could like take another one of these tubes off of his back and use it to overcharge whatever they're using. Okay, I got gotcha. you. That'd be kind of cool. He steals the energy from the enemy and then uses it within his team to fight back. Yes. That's whether interesting. That, whether that's for, by providing defense or by providing extra power to uh, friend, other friendly units. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ray, because of the quantum physics and all that with the stones, do you think the humans would be able to come up with the technology to be able to absorb that energy and redirect it? They might be able to uh, because at base everyone's using the same laws of physics. They're just coming at it from different directions. Uh, but what would be interesting would be that the Aletheian stuff being sentient and alive, it might be able to counter more quickly than, say, uh, the Earth stuff. But So you might be able to have a weapon like this begin working on the Aletheian but the Aletheian might be able to counter it more quickly than a, than a human enemy. Well, I think it would be fun is if you're playing this particular character class and you're, again, using visual cues, your suit starts to glow red and you know you have all the energy and you have like a, a countdown. You have like three seconds. You have to use it or you blow up. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. You blow up or you lose it or, you know, something like yeah. that. Yeah, um, I think all of the things that we're trying to do in here, they need to have those kind of little twists to them, uh, a certain life, um, ways they might overload, dangers, uh, you know, you can, uh, almost like chess pieces, this takes that, but it can be countered by this other thing. Uh, like rock, that, paper, scissors, Spock, lizard yeah. Spock. Yeah, exactly. You know, and. So if we can come up with the ideas we can feed into the game designers, then they can pick and choose the ones that seem to make sense for the game mechanics. And I know, uh, Mr. Steve, you still here, buddy? Anybody here, here yet? He, he's, he's staring at a bird. I am. <laughs> uh, okay, he's staring at a bird. Uh, I was muted to keep out background noise. Gotcha. Hey, uh, I know you were talking a little bit about the, the game design team. Can you throw any specifications out there yet? 
Um, no, that team is not together yet. I'm still working with Angela to get that put together. But um, I mean, we can do a lot of things here. It's mostly going to end up in the story and or the comic. Um, we're honestly we're already way past in ideas what a team this size will be able to do in actual gameplay if we want the game to actually go out. But once they get that together, then pretty much like Ray said, we'll we'll have to to cherry pick the things that we want to do work best with gameplay, and the rest will be storyline. Cool. Uh, one one thing to consider uh, is that humans will always have reason to fight other humans. They won't just be fighting Aletheans. So that's a very valid point. When he was uh, Mr. Clinton was talking about fighting bandits, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Ray. Again, like Wolf said, human nature. It's just not going to be military here. I think they're going to try to re, re colonize this area, you, or you have independents who come here. And if you get some military equipment by killing a couple of military guys, why not do that? I think you'd have rogue aspects, and it'd be great for a third party, so to speak, for quest lines as well. That you know, this settlement over here is 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 taking the Lethians and and, and putting them in slave trade, and you know, you as the heroes, uh, and you're playing humans, you need to go and take this base out and free the Lethians, which would lead to a different storyline. Oh yeah, I would see. Alethian against Alethian, uh, human against human, Alethian against human, and then groups of humans and Alethians together fighting other groups. Uh, I mean, you can go all these different directions, and um, I'm going to try to, as we develop the story further, set things up so that that can happen. Um, nice. So it flows out of the story. Now, obviously, in the game, they can do anything they want to do, we're just trying to provide an environment in which, as Steve said, they can cherry pick the aspects of that environment that make for a good game. Cool. I can do. Also, it's not, it doesn't need to be just military against military. It can also be a, a police officer against uh, gangs or bandits or farmers no, or ranchers. You know, I mean. It does, you know, we have all of those things in the past. Uh, one tribe against another tribe. Uh, right. ma Irish mafia against uh, Italian mafia. Irish will win, I'm just saying. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clinton, do you have anything else for us tonight, my friend? I do. Uh, this is my other work. That, that's my reference. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. I did. I did a lot of. Go I was googling for a good pose for this other one, and that's what came up. Wow! In, the um, FBI is watching you. That's all I have to say. But continue, please. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this was my other idea. I talked about it a little bit last time about having a flying unit. Um. So. Um, uh, on the wings here, I was thinking that we'd have the same glowing thing here, but I didn't think it. I I didn't think it. It didn't seem right to have the same hexagon pattern on this part. So I just put the lines there to kind of indicate that's where the glowing would be. Okay. But not having the hexagon pattern, or at least the way I saw it. Um, and I just figured that this would be a very long-range unit that had a that has a high-powered weapon, but they can't get in close, not by a long shot. Um, no, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. They have to stay very removed from the combat, or else they they run into the risk of running into things. They they've got a very slow turning radius, I suppose you would say it. They can't uh, they can't maneuver quite so easily when they're close to the ground. So they kind of they stay up in the air, far back away, and use their high powered with some uh, some precise aiming. Nice, that's kind of cool. Uh, I like the the aspect where there's there's lots of strengths, but there's also weaknesses. It's like taking on a person who's using a bow hand to hand. Uh, that bow's not going to be great close up. Maybe one shot, but then you're pretty much screwed. Uh, and I like the, like again the idea where they're not super fast, they're not super agile. But I definitely wouldn't want somebody taking pot shots from me. 
a half mile up in the air. That would <laughs> that would make my day bad. Mm -hmm. I like the idea because uh, I wish Nelson was here. And I know World of Warcraft. Uh, in the beginning, you weren't able to to you have your flying mounts. Uh, you just was all ground based, and then they had to make a patch. And then you could fly over everything. And, is this some really good aspects to think of? Or are we going to want our people to be able to do that? If we had a flying unit here to make things equal and more interesting, what sort of flying units would we have with the Alethians? Will they have to have some sort of birds of prey that they ride? They, the airbenders, so to speak, and forgive me for if that's a, yes, a, a copyrighted word from Avatar, but are they going to be able to fly like that? Well, they should be able to... Uh, some of them with the right set of stones that have the skill to manipulate those stones should be able to levitate. Now, you, but levitate's different from flight, so levitate's yeah. up and down. Well, think like levitate like uh, Magneto levitate. Okay. I can is see this, this. This is someone who can fly up high, right? Correct. Yeah, there's there's issues against if you have melee units and you have uh, a sky sniper, you know, a flying sniper, uh, how you are going to um, uh, fight back as a melee unit. Well, at the same time, uh, and again, I hate to go back to World of Warcraft, but that's what I'm very familiar with. Uh, you have some sort of mage who's able to throw area effect spells or long distance like fireballs and all you have is a sword. You, you have to find a way to close that distance. So it's right. not unheard of, but right. again, we have to wait for the designers to see, okay, this is good and this is what balance is and we can't really do that because it's not balance. But that's that's closing distance on the ground versus right. if, you can't, if you can't fly and you're only melee, there's no way to close the distance. No, I, I agree with that. So, uh, go ahead. But yeah, it's a des design decision. I was just going to say, you, a melee unit could maybe have some sort of reflective shield so that they could uh, possibly reflect the attack backwards. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, your ground troops, because uh, again, we're not talking about hack and slash sword stuff here. Uh, you know, these are advanced Earth units, uh, like 200 years in the future, and the Aletheans uh, have uh, their own versions of these things. So it would seem to me that both sides, with somewhat different technologies and strengths and weaknesses, would have the ability for using directed <laughs> energy weapons, similar to lasers, and also uh, kinetic energy weapons, which essentially is what a gun is, you move a, a piece of uh, matter at something really, really fast so that when it gets hit, it's hurt. Uh, you, and if something's up in the air, either a directed energy weapon or uh, a kinetic energy weapon can take you out if they can hit you. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah, but, so uh, you, again, you, you think you, you could hit it, it would drop to the ground, and then you could melee it? That was where you're. Or you could kill it in the air and it drops to the ground dead if you hit it just right. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're if you're gonna have, even if you have a, a unit that can do range, if if your primary skills are all, uh, what you're gonna be good at is all range, then it's it's there's no way to have a, a real fair fight in that scenario because uh, you would need, I mean, it, in in a game where it's all land, uh, yeah, the range people have an advantage on range, but if you close that gap, they're, they're in trouble. You know, in this way, it's, it's only one is uh, uh, favored, but anyway. That's some good aspects, and uh, that's, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Steve, uh, unmute yourself, uh, that's what the design team from the side, correct? Correct. Um, they, they have to take in a lot of things, not just uh, balanced gameplay between character types, but um, uh, on a team this size, on a game this size, uh, as MMs go, 
probably going to be pretty small. Um, not a lot of classes. They'll have to take things into consideration, like if you have all ground metal, um, environment designs tend to revolve around providing cover, giving alleys for long distance shooting, giving areas for close quarters combat to also balance out the gameplay. If you've got somebody a quarter mile up in the air, you've compromised a lot of that in many ways without some serious design considerations. This guy's got an open alleyway to everybody. Correct. So, but I can also see if we have floating rocks. Uh, we may have a level, and again this is very spe speculative at this point, but uh, maybe make a level where it's all air combat for both sides. And you have floating rocks that, you know, you, in essence, you're creating what's on the ground. This is, you're flying in the air, so you kind of have that third dimension where you can go up and down. That's where you only have ground combat. It's just that two-dimensional field. You have uh, X, Y axis, but, you know, the Z axis. Yeah, and, I mean, where it ultimately ends up, I don't know. Um, you know I, I guess I'm just trying to get everybody to if not scale back their ideas, scale back their hopes for what initially will come from the design team. Right. Yeah. And you know, with speaking with that, it's, I personally, it's going to be a bitter pill. I'm not, there's no two ways around it. Because it, this is a great idea, Mr. Clinton. It's grandioso, and I, I want us to shoot for the stars. But we, when reality hits us, and the design team's like, that's a great idea, but we don't have the manpower to do that because it's going to take X amount of hours for codes and this and that. So let's scale back and do X, Y, and Z. It's, this doesn't mean it's a bad idea by any means. It just may not mean not at the moment. This may be a patch later on where we can just you know add more people for the design team and get things done. But uh, right now, you know, by all means, shoot for the stars. Absolutely, for now. Um, and, and remember, even if it can't initially be in the game, you might provide an idea that would be really cool in the story. Right. And that is true. It, it might be a, a ability, too, to kind of hover up. And maybe you don't go as high, but maybe you hover up, but you're going to come down, so you better... You know. That's what I was going to do with uh, my little jet pack, my scuba Steve right. guy, where, you know, you, can, you could close great distances pretty quick. Uh, but, you know, it may be on a charge where there's a a two minute cooldown and or a minute cooldown and even a minute cooldown is is forever in PvP. I mean you're fighting you got all this crap going on all around you and you you initialize that and boom, okay, you're fine, you're out of there for the moment. But then you just land someplace else and there's more combat. And you're like, oh man, I wish this would cool down. Hurry up, I need out of here. So I think there's some good aspects and some good ideas. Uh, again, shoot for the stars. Also remember in an MMO uh, uh, traditional MMORPG, uh, it, it, reality is fudged a lot, you know, I mean, it's the, there's people getting bashed, their heads bashed with huge war hammers and they're wearing a cloth hat, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> and they're, and they're, you know, taking it, so. Yeah, well, that, and that's, that's why the, big, the biggest design consideration is what makes the game fun, not right necessarily realistic or true to the story or I mean it, gameplay is at the basis of all of it. So. Or even yeah. what is cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, in concept. Well you know, one time I thought the Smurfs were cool and I loved Hefty's little heart shaped tattoo that he had in his hand or his arm. Not so much cool anymore, but uh, cool is relative. Chirp chirp. Let's open up to somebody else. Um, any questions? Because we're all here. If you got something to say, by all means, don't hold back. Be nice and be uh, cordial. But uh, let's hear from some more people. Don't have any questions, but uh, the next person to raise their hand was an Eve. Eve's here. Hey, my baby girl. Go ahead and take her. How you doing, Eve? Oh, oh. Mike's, Mike's still broken. Oh, Mike's still broken. Okay. Bullocks. Okay. 
Well, first of all, thanks for the kind words on Facebook. I appreciate that. I'm very much more appreciative that you're staying up way, way uber late uh, to show us what you got. So I'll kind of take a... <laughs> I just woke up. <laughs> well, thank you for taking a nap so you could uh, get up. Uh, I'm taking a look at your chick in the green outfit right there. Uh, I like the hair, the wind, the background's awesome. Very wolfish looking going on. Um, I'm not sure. What do you think? What class do you think she would be? Uh, wolf. I think she's a roguish type. The the one on the left or the right? The left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rogue ranger or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the maybe the green makes uh, me think ranger, as well, then, in as in a elfin ranger or something. You're the colorist, so it just goes to prove that I mean color yeah. weighs in heavy. Because I mean, you're right. I think of green. I, I think of Legolas or uh, the dude who was a ranger, uh, Vigo, in Lord of the Rings. I mean, they, they wear the green stuff. Well, well, it's also I. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're used to. Um, at least on Earth, uh, there being a lot of green in in nature and forests and things like that. So uh, if you have you're wearing green and brown, you, you think, okay, you're going to blend in uh, to that environment versus uh, 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 down at the docks <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> you know, or you're wearing green in a desert outfit or a desert environment doesn't yeah. usually. I guess fit in, or you're you you're in the tundra, the white tundra, and you have a ninja outfit on. You're gonna flake out like a chocolate chip. So hold on, she's writing more. Uh, the left one I played around with, Art Rage. It's kind of tricky. Thought of the human comic book heroine that she's going to have the open color. Color, color, whatever you want to say. Uh, so, so this is the human, that, the first human to bond with a stone. That's this character. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Because I've seen the stone, I'm like, wait a minute, this is not a yeah, Okay, now I got it, yeah. Uh, Eve is always thinking, she, she's dangerous. I'm glad, I, I mean, I feel, I feel sorry for her boyfriend because, you know, She's so smart as a whip, and if he doesn't do something, you told me that you were going to clean the toilet two days ago. I think she remembers everything. The, Most women the, do. The right one, it, I, I think, uh, uh, Sea Captain. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you can kind of say that because uh, the, the the baggy pants. And 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 Eve is saying that. Uh sort of Star Trek Navy, therefore, yeah, so the sea, exactly. And going back to Star Trek, if you looked at their, I'm not saying they're bell bottoms by any means, but the original episodes with, you know, Captain James T. Kirk and everybody, they, they kind of had a flare to the bottom of their pants, and then they had their boots on as well. But I can see that, and I love, and again, she's always thinking, uh, this is what's awesome and dangerous about her. She she has reasons for everything she does. She is the female version of Batman. I'm, that's, I believe it. It's kind of a colonial America. <laughs> it also also fits into the steampunk theory and idea that we were yeah. playing with as well. Well, you know, fashion, uh, you know, comes you know in circles. <laughs> so uh, things things come back into style and. So it's hammer time. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, that was no hammer time. Okay, she continues to type. Uh, terminology is for the Navy, actually. They made many references to naval traditions and is a classical science fiction series of the 60s slash 70s years. It's also a not very often used concept. That's true. Well, that might be kind of cool to have that sort of uniform along those lines. Uh, I think that might be our next assignment. Uh, 
doing some sort of up-to-date science fiction cool naval uniform. But of course, I mean that could be uh, a space uh, ship. Well, I guess we're not really doing the spaceship thing, so maybe. It's... Well, they have to get here somehow. Mister, right. that's right. true. But, They're going to take jump gonna, points. I mean, the if the Lethians aren't. I don't think the Lethians are really having spaceships, so there's not going to. I doubt we're doing spaceship battles and stuff. There's no, but you can see time. spaceships in the background. I mean, Steve, heck, he's right. making the concept art for hangar, hangar bays. So you're definitely going to see some spaceships around the place. And who's to say that one of the levels or the, the quest for the Alethians is not to sneak on board a starship and create havoc or do guerrilla-type warfare on a spaceship? I mean, well, I think that would be cool. Take them out of their normal environment with stones and trees and put them on, on a hangar deck in space. I mean, how cool would that be? Take a fish well, out of water. It could also be just like an Air Force type thing. True. Well, I'm thinking that for this particular character, this girl is not military. Uh, she's essentially been kidnapped to be experimented on and, and because she actually does bond with the stone, it helps her escape. So probably the one on the right, if you're thinking that maybe 200 years from now, that might be a, a sort of an outrageous look that young kids put on because I know when I was 20 years old, I had shoulder-length hair, bell-bottom pants, uh, a, a granny glasses, and a World War I Marine officer's uniform coat. Dude, were you a hippie? Uh, pretty close. Wow. Mr. Ray, you're awesome. With a guitar across my back, right? <laughs> so, so who knows what might be the fashion for a girl in her late teens or early 20s who gets kidnapped to be experimented on and who manages to escape. Uh, she's probably going to have some fairly dramatic look to her, and the one on the right might work just fine. Okay. Yeah, it's not, everybody's not necessarily in a jumpsuit with, that, with a V um, shape on the chest. Or tape uh, young, young people, particularly girls, like to wear costumes. They like to make a statement. So I think that would work beautifully. Nice. Well done, Miss Eve. It's very pirate like and combines the steampunk idea. I yeah. agree with you, Miss Eve. And again, Eve, uh, her microphone's broken, but she's working super hard. She's in Germany right now, and uh, it's probably like 4.30 in the morning there. So I, I love and respect what you do, girl. You bring your lock to the table. Going to go now and go back to bed. I'll get no, ready for work. Work. All right. I appreciate you being here, Eve. You keep it up. Um, you're a blessing. Seriously, girl. Keep it up. And have a good day at work, all right? Everyone wave at Eve. Say, bye, Eve. La fita Zane, la fita Horn, ich liebe dich. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. All right, uh, Raspberry Tart, do we have, who's the next victim here? Miguel. Miguel. Hey, hey you know, because Miguel. Miguel is from Mexico, honest to goodness story. I'm in the McDonald's drive through today, and as he's powering everything up, uh, I, I'm ordering food for my family, and they're like, would you like to try a new quarter pounder of cheese? And I'm like, yeah, I want this thing here, but I can't pronounce it, and I start spelling it. And my wife looks at me and starts laughing. It's, it's a com combination of English and then the other side, Spanish. I just thought it was some funky name for a new sandwich. I'm like, I, I can't pronounce this, but that's what I want. So uh, Miguel's going to have to come down here to uh, North Carolina and teach me some Spanish, please. Sure. <laughs> I like it. I love I love their cuts and the armor. And it's still lightweight enough. It's nothing at all like some sort of medieval sort of armor that we've been playing around with. This look and I love the pose. It's very dynamic. So wow. explain so, to us 
tell us your, your thought process. Well, I was thinking about we have a, we could have a, a some kind of tech guy or an engineer, which will not specifically will handle weapons, but most like control them. Like, for example, he can send drones. He can uh, call for I don't know attacks. He can hack into things. He can support with the communications and let me ask you because you, you just you spurred an idea mr. Ray let me ask you this um, and I'm throwing out jargon I probably don't have any idea what I'm talking about but how would it be possible for a human to write an algorithm using the binary code to talk to these sentient stones so they could actually in, in essence hack into stuff like that well, where the I think the uh, things will overlap is when you go beyond the binary, and I, we've talked about this a little bit on the forums, we now currently have, for the very first time, actual quantum computers. Lockheed has two of them. Uh, NASA has ordered one, um, and Google actually has one. So they operate in more than, than uh, offer on state, they operate in superposition states. And that would be the way that the Aletheian crystals and other silicon-like, because they're not necessarily all crystals, operate. So if humans have quantum computers, they might very well be able to interact with the stones. Nice. And that would bring uh, Mr. McGill's vision here to fruition that it will be a strong possibility that I like this. I love our thought process. It, anyway, it, also depends on if they, it also depends on if they have a USB port or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is this adapter European or American or yeah. lithium? We're screwed. Right. Well, so many years in the future, I think we will be standards standardized in some way <laughs> I don't know <laughs> well not even just that but I mean going back to like Star Trek where you know like they're like you're scanning you to find out your, all your vital signs who's to say this guy just can't scan something and either nanite technology or whatever we have that starts to interface like that right no wires yeah no wires Wires is so 2013 we're cutting the cord all over the place yeah, uh, they even you can even charge your phones without a cord anymore. That's no no problem. Been around for a while. Wow. Yeah, you know what's really cord, cool about cordless all this? power is going to be neat. Sorry. You no, know, what, what's really cool about all this? Back in the day of the Star Trek, you know, when Kirk flipped up his communicator, that that was our cell phone. That was our flip phone. Uh, Gene Roddenberry thought outside the box. And a lot of what he has conceptualized has come to pass. And it's just really kind of cool to have this opportunity. Uh, and Mr. Ray is just a wealth of information. And it's really cool because we, we come from different parts of the world, different walks of life, that we can bring this all in here and then maybe come up with the next greatest thing. It's almost like, you know, the old adage, you, you put 20 chimpanzees in a room with a typewriter and they can, like, type up war and peace if you give them enough time. Uh, I'm definitely a chimpanzee, and I know Steve throws poo, so maybe we'll all come up with some really cool... Derek, you went away? Yeah, he went away from me, too. Do you need that to uh, unplug, replug, like last time? Can you hear me now? Yep. yep. Yes, but How about weird now? feedback. Yep. Getting a little 60 cycle hum in there. <laughs> Earth, Earth for Derek. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Still, still, still hear the feedback. Well, this. Ah, blocks. Try one more time. Hey, I can hear everybody now. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 yeah the, the, the feedback isn't terrible. It's just. It, it's really more. You probably have a ground fault somewhere. It's a 60 cycle hum. It's not feedback, really. 
Holy, Holy crap, who knows, who knows that stuff, Mr. Ray? You're like a superhero. <laughs> and, now, and now it's gone. So, uh, but, you have yeah, the 60 but, second home. That, that is awesome. awesome. What, what you were talking about, think about it. Um, the, those doors that open automatically in Star Trek are in every grocery store in the country. True. If you, if you go to the next generation, uh, you have... Uh, they all had iPads, basically. That's why they read books on. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're living in that future already. Wow. All right, so Mr. Miguel, explain your guy then with in detail, because I think we've established that, yeah, this could actually happen. Well, uh, I, as I was saying, it was uh, kind of an engineer guy, a very high-tech guy, who can control weapons um, more, more than use them. He can, well, he can use them, but in, indirectly, no? Uh, he could maybe, like here in this kind of briefcase I put here, maybe he can mount some kind of a sentry. Uh, I don't know, maybe what was Clinton saying about the energy, maybe he can use it or can get advantage of it. That's what I came up with, with, with Clinton's idea. Nice. Uh, uh, what else? Well, that's pretty much it about this guy. Oh. I, I like the face, it's blue. It gives you kind of like that, you know, there's something there. Oh, this is like a visor, like... Uh, yeah. Right. Like a uh, display. Not at all like Scuba Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Butthead. <laughs> But really well done. Nice dynamic pose. Uh, what's really cool, because you know, I know you've been through the drawing classes, uh, if you get the general shape and form, armor is awesome and very forgiving. Because you know, you have the shoulder plate, there's a deltoid, uh, then your bicep, tricep area. You're just, you're really doing really well. Well done. Thank you. Quite welcome. Well, Do you have anything else to show us tonight? Yes, I have two more. OK. Uh, this is my idea of kind of a scout Ooh. or an infiltrator guy. I like him a lot. This guy is, well, it's lightly armored, it has lightly ar light armor, I mean. Um, but it can be very agile, maybe. I was thinking the suit he's wearing, it could give, it could give him, like, the ability to run faster or to have more strength or something like that. Uh, he could have a lot of gadgets, like for example, this. I put like some kind of a harness in here with, where he can use to climb or get inside, uh, well, pretty much everywhere he wants. And, and that's my, what I was thinking. Looks nice. like a backstabber. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's a Maybe he has a, a cloaking ability. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I forgot about that. Uh, maybe his armor can turn some kind of invisibility into him. I like it. I like the stylized look. I like the elongated sort of torso that you're going on, and the blue eyes, a great color touch. It looks spooky. I would not want to run into that guy in, in the woods, in my bathroom, any place. Well done. And, well, my final idea is some, well, you're going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know it's uh, very, very cliché, like have the cowboy guy. Space cowboy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me, I don't know. Yeah. Rem I reminds me of the like cartoon. Uh, do you remember Galaxy Rangers? Uh, no. Well, it wasn't obviously that popular, but it was kind of a spy, space cowboy theme to it. And they were all riding these these iron metal robotic horses, and Shane Gooseman had a bio thing. And he got hit, say, with a bullet. His body would, like, turn into metal because it would oh, react. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, It would suck the, that he has to be shot by a bullet first for his body to react, and <laughs> that's the only drawback. He, he's like, I got shot in the head. Okay, now I'm immune. Like, no, you're still dead. I think this, this the in Mexico was called differently. I, I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> this guy could either be a, um, 
an outskirts outlaw or lawkeeper. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about he maybe he could be one of the outlaws, maybe even a, like some kind of authority, a sheriff if you want. Or a bounty hunter know. maybe. Yeah, bounty hunter. It could be. It could also be. But I, really well I, I, like I just felt like drawing it. <laughs> That's cool. Draw because you want to draw, and it works. I, I like that idea because uh, we, as concept artists, we really need to push the boundary and not get, I guess, so used to uh, our little safe zone. Because a lot of us, well, me especially, it's all military stuff. Military this, military that. And we have this sort of look. And here you come out of the blue and you bring us this. And it may spark the next coolest, greatest idea. And I kind of want to propose that since we're wrapping up. For next class, let's do a, a space cowboy theme. Let's do an old western cyberpunk, futuristic, throw it all together, but a definite cowboy theme and see what we can come up with. Well, put this guy next to uh, Eve's uh, girl with the Navy-inspired outfit, and there's a lot of similarity in, in concept and style here. Very true. I like that. Let's let's do that. Our, our next assignment, again, we're, we're very, very early into the human evolution, if you want to say it, uh, stage. Uh, let's do one officer like this and one outlaw like this so we can have, you know, two, two sides of the coin, but in a space cowboy sort of theme. I think that might be really fun and cool to do. Watch a lot of Firefly. I know, right? I was just thinking, it's Mal. Exactly. That's I love that. So it's shiny, good feel. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, only one season. I was so mad. Who would cancel? I know. That? I know. Uh, at least at least they had the movie. It would have sucked if they didn't have that movie to to wrap things up and kill it. off characters. Yeah, I know, right? Let's kill off anyway. Not even gonna go there. <laughs> Don't even get me uh, started. I know, right? Erg. Wash. I loved him and his dinosaurs. Uh, Let's, uh, I'm going to cry now. Does anybody have any last minute comments or, or, or let's do the round table thing? Mr. Ray, your thoughts? Well, one of the things, if you're thinking about Earth, uh, if indeed we have a situation where we're losing our shielding for radiation, you're going to definitely have uh, uh, parts uh, of town or out in the countryside where people don't have cover they are having the mutation thing, they are having to piece things together uh, out of whatever they can get their hands on, they're poor, uh, think a little bit of some of the, the things that you had in uh, Max Headroom, if anybody remembers that. I remember thing. that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of Mad Max and Thunderdome, only not quite that outrageous. That's going to be going on in the outskirts of Earth among the people who are scrambling just to figure out a way to stay alive or get themselves healed if they're sick, all the way to the folks who are very wealthy and powerful and they're protected and uh, they are sending out uh, soldiers and uh, settlers uh, ahead of when they're going to go uh, to go to these other worlds. Uh, so even the people who are coming to the other worlds, you're only going to have a handful of the rich and powerful. Everybody else is going to be expendable. So think in those kinds of terms. How cool would it be, and I'm just throwing this out here, but you know, like the English did to uh, the guys in Australia. They emptied their prisons and said, hey, go away. How cool would it be to, you know, you could have a rogue class, literally starting area, where that's what the humans did emptied out their prisons and the thugs and cut purses, like, okay, you're going to terraform this area right here, make it very not hospitable to anybody, and have that sort of decor and, and feel and mood that this is the bad guy side of town. And then the rich guys will come in and take it over and push them off to the side once they've done all the hard work. Heck yeah, that's the way life is, right? Yeah. So I think that... We're, we're a long way from getting to the Earth story in the comics, but those are the kinds of things in terms of an environment that I've been thinking about. And uh, it, this fits in there, and so does what Eve did, as well as the sleek, 
hard body because those would be professional soldiers uh, that would be with the rich and powerful, but these more ragtag folks or more costumey folks could be the ones on the periphery uh, just trying to survive. And they, a lot of times people in that position deliberately want to look outrageous. You have somebody who, who works as a janitor and they have a $500 suit because that's the one thing that makes them stand out. So again, that kind of thinking. Nice. I like it. I like where you're going with that. Uh, Mr. Miguel, any last thoughts? Uh, no. Well, well, just to finish, I, uh, I gave this guy the, his kind of steampunky old looking revolver. And uh, they are oh, the eye patch that I know how, how much you would like them. I love them eye patches. Heck yeah. Very cool. Well done. I'm really glad you thought outside the box. And this goes to show that just one spark of an idea, can, who knows what it can lead into. Mr. Clinton, do you have any last minute thoughts? Um, I, I like what I just heard about ideas for the story. Um, the only thing I'd add is uh, it also reminds me of a town called Mercy from Doctor Who. Yeah, I thought of that. Oh, it's the gunslinger. They had space they, cowboys. They have some. They, they, yeah, on his his little on his uh, his his uh, right leg. Does anybody see it kind of like a, a little bear? <laughs> I, mean, can, I can see it. Oh my god! It is. Bear. <laughs> I see it, the eyeballs and his little feet. Yeah, the little hand. Yeah. Tell yeah. <laughs> tail or something. I, don't know. I see that. That's, 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 that's we'll that's have crazy. robots that look like animals. Like Daggett from Battlestar Galactica, the original. Uh, Sid, do you have any last minute thoughts? I knew you were going to say that. What, Daggett? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm old. Yeah, no, I don't have many thoughts, <laughs> especially. Uh, you're actually a blonde under that red head, right? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm a dirty blonde. I, 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 blah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Steve, do you have any last minute thoughts? Um, if anybody wants to throw any ideas out there for environments, by all means, do so. Um, Donald's been MIA for a while, so I'm kind of have my own out here right now. All right, let's, All right, let's, let's get a volunteer, at least one volunteer right here who wants to do an environment next class. Chirp, chirp. Who's going to give it a try? I love you, Miguel. Yes, I want you to give it a try. Mr. Steve, what, what do you want him to work on? Yeah, what do you want him to work on? Since we're working on, uh, on the human side, why don't we play around with either... Uh, Military type installations or outskirts settlements. Okay. Your choice. I think I'll go with the outskirts. Alrighty. I want a bar called the Elysian Spit. That would rock. I'm just saying, you know, that's my idea. A bar, Elysian Spit. Who doesn't want to go drink there? <laughs> I want one called the Need One. Ooh, that's, that's good, too. Very good. From Defiance. I, uh, I like that show. All right, who am I forgetting? Uh, Wolf, any last thoughts? Well, uh, I'm no science expert, but it uh, seems to me uh, all these people dealing with all this radiation, I would say about half of them must be superheroes, right? It's, duh, the Hulk, okay. She-Hulk. Right, so we're at, we'll have to we'll have to factor that in. That's <laughs> all super. Well, we need more heroic poses because they're super. Unfortunately, they ran out of radioactive spiders. Oh uh, darn! That sucks. <laughs> Sold the last one yesterday, but I have this pet rock, and it talks once a day, and it already talked today. But you can buy it now and listen to it tomorrow. Uh, that would be my idea. Uh, did I forget anybody else that wants to take any last minute thoughts or questions or comments? Uh, me, uh, do we have a place to upload all the images yet? 
Uh, no, not that I know of. I know that uh, NATO is yeah, working. Nitro's on not here tonight. Nitro. Nitro. Be working on it. So maybe by next week we will find out something. That's that's my hopes. We might find out sooner. Uh, so watch the forums. If we find out something, we'll definitely post it on there. And there and, are still think, there are, are still slots on the forums. You can post it. All right. Yeah. Um, Cool. Guys, good class tonight. Some really good things. So the assignment for next week, uh, keeping with the Cowboy Cyberpunk, not Cyberpunk, Steampunk sort of theme, let's do an officer's look and then uh, your classic, I guess, cutthroat, scoundrel, sort of Han Solo-ish look and see what we come up with. Wait, what do you mean officer? Uh, well, one military look in the Space Cowboy sort of uniform. Like so a combination military, mil of military and yeah, a military. What what do you think a military officer would look like if that is the standard style of dress? I, I think he would look differently, or he or she would look differently than the standard. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to look like soldiers. They're going to they're going to stand out, and they're probably not going to have lots of armor on. Right. They're going to have some kind of a uniform. Right, but how will that uniform look if we're going kind of like the old West feel? Does that make sense? Well, I was thinking, I mean, if you look at, like, say, in uh, Firefly, uh, uh, the military looked very different than everybody else. They, they looked very military and sleek, and it's pretty different. That's kind of how I imagine that maybe maybe more like uh, how the, the law keepers are... Uh, 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 looking, so you know that they they would probably be th looking the same. That might be an interesting way to go. I say we play around with it because this is the time frame to do yeah. that. This is when we play around with it. So we have our work cut out for us. We know what we need to do, and we will come back same bat time, same bat channel. Remember, uh, radio show coming up Friday. Some really great information and ideas. That will be 7 o'clock Eastern time, followed by a fantasy art class uh, right after that. So please tune in for that. Guys and gals, thank you very much. Sid, uh, Curtis, thank you very much for being my handler tonight. To Mr. Jared and everybody at the Buzz Cave, I said hi. Uh, Steve, Miguel, Mr. Clinton, Mr. A, as always. Everybody else, thank you for being here, and we will talk soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and have fun tomorrow, 4th of July, right? That's right. <laughs>